Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, welcome. My name is Denek Hanzalek, and today uh, we are starting the 52nd, I think, um, talk of the scheduling seminar. So let me first uh, uh, introduce a new event, uh, which is announcement of conferences. Uh, and uh, this is like one slide and two minute presentation, uh, which everyone from the community is welcome to do at the beginning of the seminar. And today we have the first announcement and it will be given by Thomas Jakobris Itzen. Okay, please go Hello. ahead. Hello, I was, I was only given one minute. I will try to keep it short. Now, I'm the main organizer of the PETAT 2024 conference, in, which is in Copenhagen this year. It's the 14th International Time Taking Conference. Uh, and uh, we have, it's, it's scheduling, and we have uh, a number of keynote speakers, which you might know. Sigrid Knust from uh, University of Osnabrück and Nusret Musli, she was at the University of Vienna. And uh, furthermore, we have Kasmita, and she's going to talk about multi-objective stuff. The focus is timetabling, but really it's scheduling in its broadest sense. So timetabling should not be just be timetabling for education, but in a broader sense. And it's running from the 27th of, uh, of August to the 30th of August uh, in Copenhagen or at my university, north of Copenhagen, Technical University of Denmark. We have a website up and running, not completed yet, but most of the most important information is there. Please feel free to go, uh, go in and take a look at it. The deadline for the abstracts is the 15th of March. They, they are short abstracts, so like half a page a page, something like that. So it shouldn't be a problem to do that. Um, hoping to see some of you there um, and hoping that we can, well, hopefully take some of the people who would go otherwise to miss that, which doesn't exist anymore. Okay. Thank you very much. And now let me ask uh, Professor Mike Pinedo to introduce the speaker. Oh. Okay, I'm privileged to introduce Klaus Hager. Uh, Klaus Hager uh, got his PhD in 2022 at the Technische Universiteit Berlin with the late uh, Rolf Niedermeyer. Uh, his thesis was on complexity in scheduling and uh, fairness in scheduling. He right now, after finishing at, in Berlin, he joined Ben Gurion University in the Negev uh, in Israel, and where he is working with uh, Dvir Shabtai and uh, Danny Hermelin. Uh, you should try to look at uh, Klaus's Vita, and then you can see that whenever you have a problem with some complexity proof that you got stuck in, uh, you may send him an email because uh, he may solve it for you. <laughs> uh, he is one of the experts in compl scheduling complexity. Okay, Klaus, uh, go ahead. Yes, uh, thanks for the introduction and uh, for letting me speak here. So uh, my talk today will be on uh, minimizing the weighted number of party jobs on a single machine and the computational complexity of this problem and uh, is based on joint work with Danny Hermelin. Um, so uh, yeah, so let's start with the problem. Okay, many of you probably uh, already know the problem. So uh, yeah, in the prefix scheduling notation, it's denoted by this. So we have one machine in this toy example, it's a printer. And we have several jobs which need to be scheduled uh, non preemptively on this machine. And each of these jobs has uh, three different characteristics. So first of all, uh, some processing time, uh, which in this toy example of a printer and several documents which need to be printed might just be the processing, uh, the number of pages. And uh, second, there is uh, the weight of the pro um, of the um, of the job, which mirrors the importance. So the larger the weight is, the more important the job is. And lastly, some due date on which we agreed to uh, finish the job. And uh, the task now is to find a schedule or permutation of the jobs. Uh, which minimizes the weighted number of uh, party jobs, so the weighted number of jobs which are completed after their due date. And uh, so, yeah, considering, for example, this example here on top, uh, if you would just schedule the orders, uh, jobs according to their number, so first document one, then two, then three, and then four, 
um, then we would actually have uh, that document one is completed at time five, so before it's due date of 16. So uh, yeah, this is, oh, this drops early. Um, however, document two is finished at time nine, but uh, should have been finished at already at time six. So this job is late and we have to pay a penalty of its weight, so five for this job. And similarly, job uh, three would also be, uh, is also late, resulting in a penalty of six, while job four is early. And uh, yeah, in this example, um, there is also a better solution. So if we would move the job three to the front and job two to the end, then we would uh, get that, uh, well, only job two here is late while our, all other three jobs are early. And uh, yeah, this is actually also, um, well, a property we can always assume from an uh, optimal schedule, but, uh, namely that all tardy jobs are at the end of the schedule. Because, uh, well, I mean, as soon as a job is tardy, uh, well, we have to pay its penalty, but this penalty does not increase uh, no matter how uh, tardy the job is. So we can just move them to the end. And yes, so we now want to find the schedule uh, which minimizes the weighted number of tardy jobs and, uh, well, ask ourselves from a computational complexity point of view, like how fast can we find the schedule? And so, unfortunately, in general, uh, this problem is weakly and be hard um, because if all jobs uh, have the same due date, then it is essentially the knapsack problem. Um, as we want to maximize kind of the, 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 the all the schedules, uh, the job, the weight of the jobs which finish before the um, this common due date. And um, however, if each job has the same weight or um, so each of its unit weight is equally important. Um, then the problem can be solved in uh, n log n time. That's an open by new. And um, well, the problem is weakly appeared, um, but it admits a pseudo-polynomial time algorithm for either the total processing time or the total weight of all jobs together. And further, from an approximation point of view, it's quite well approximable. So it admits an FP task. Um, so in some sense, uh, this problem is one of the easiest NP-hard problems because it admits efficient pseudo-polynomial time algorithms as well as efficient approximation algorithms. Nevertheless, uh, we might to still want to uh, solve the problem optimally. And uh, well, the instances occurring in practice might not be as general as like this and this NP-hard uh, instances from the NP-hardness proof, which are just worst case instances. So for example, it might happen that uh, well, our schedule, or we only have kind of three kinds of jobs, important jobs, medium important jobs, and uh, less important jobs. Uh, and so we would have only three different weights uh, for all jobs together. And so each job has one of these three different weights. And assuming that there are only a con number of weights actually uh, simplifies this problem and uh, allows um, yeah for if we, so if you have only a constant number of different weights uh, then the problem can be solved in polynomial time uh, the same is true for a constant number of processing times but for a constant number of due dates this uh, is not to be expected because already for one due date the problem is NP hard and if not only the number of weights or only the number of uh, processing times, but uh, two of uh, the number of weights, number of processing times or number of weights uh, are constant, then we actually can improve on uh, these running times here by, um, well, kind of moving this, uh, the number of weights out of the, the exponent from the, the, um, from the uh, um, number of jobs and the set separated into some, uh, well, exponential, almost exponential function here, uh, only depending then on the number of weights. And yeah, these algorithms are based on integer programming. And this is kind of the, the uh, starting, the central question of our uh, research. So uh, can we improve on these algorithms with, with uh, for when we have only very few different weights? Uh, so ideally arriving at some, uh, well, running time of the form 2 to the W sharp times uh, polynomial 
uh, of n uh, as we kind of uh, have here. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, our main result that is, is unlikely to be possible. So um, assuming some complexity theoretic assumption called ETH, I will talk in a minute on uh, what this means uh, intuitively. Um, yeah, we, we can improve on these known algorithms uh, not too much, only by some uh, yeah log uh, of the W sharp uh, factor in the exponent and not more. Uh, so uh, in particular, I this most desired items of the form two to the W sharp or even two to the two of the W sharp times poly of n are not possible, assuming this conjecture ETH. Uh, and yeah, so now let me shortly intuitively explain what ETH means. So ETH stands for exponential time hypothesis and is a well-used uh, hypothesis in um, fine grained complexity. And on an informal level, uh, this means that satisfiability requires exponential time. So uh, probably, uh, I hope that for those of you who know the hypothesis NP unequals NP, the central hypothesis in theoretical computer science. Um, this hypothesis can be equivalently reformulated to satisfiability requiring super polynomial time. And now expansion, the expansion of time hypothesis, the strengthening of this NP unequals NP hypothesis to say that satisfiable does not require a super polynomial, but actually truly exponential time. So uh, a bit more formal, the set, uh, ETH uh, states that there exists some constant larger than one, such that uh, solving satisfy three satisfiability, so satisfiability on instances where each clause has at most three very, uh, literals, uh, that this requires uh, C to the end time where n is the number of variables. Um, okay, so this is kind of our main result. And for those of you who uh, looked at the title, which is talking about W1 hardness, um, so W1 hardness uh, uh, is some, yeah, under, other, under some other complexity theoretic assumption, which I will not uh, explain here. Um, we can, which is called the FPT unequal W1. We can, uh, well, this assumption is kind, is, is still stronger than P unequals NP, but uh, weaker than the ETH. And uh, yeah, under this assumption, we get a weaker running time bound. So we, where we only exclude this O to the two W sharp times poly of N or like, so actually this might be even a much, much larger function. Um, yeah, uh, but um, yeah, so the, we get a, using this weaker assumption, we get a weaker uh, running time lower. And um, yes, so for the remainder of this talk, I now want to kind of sketch uh, how, to, how we derive this result here. And uh, yeah, so how do we uh, show running time lower bounds uh, like this? So the, the basic idea is kind of uh, the same as uh, showing running the classical running time lower bound that a problem is not solvable in polynomial time by showing NP hardness. So um, yeah, we start uh, with some hard problem and then show that if we can so and then show that th we can solve this hard problem more efficiently than we, we believe we can solve it, um, assuming that we have such an efficient algorithm for our problem. So uh, yeah, now for the classical P equals NP, NP hardness proof, um, this is based on the so-called many one reductions, where we kind of uh, start with some problem P for which we know that it is hard to solve. So this problem is NP hard. And uh, then we transform this problem P into uh, the, the, an instance of the problem which we are really interested in, in uh, such that, um, yeah, these, um, this, um, these instances are equivalent and the reduction runs in polynomial time. And the idea here is that if we now could solve Q in polynomial time, then we could also solve our hard problem P in polynomial time by uh, first transforming this uh, problem P using this reduction to an instance of Q, 
and then applying the assumed um, algorithm, uh, efficient algorithm for Q. And this is the same idea we, we use for our lower bound. And uh, so, yeah, we want to show that if we can solve the minimization of the weighted number of tardy jobs in this running time, then we can solve some other hard problem, which I will define later in some running time, which is pretty unlikely. And uh, this can actually be done uh, also using many one reductions. Um, however, uh, the many redu we need one more crucial property on the many one reduction, uh, namely that this um, W sharp, so the number of weights, is uh, uh, yeah bounded in uh, this parameter k here from the problem p to uh, yeah because this appears here both in the exponent. And yeah, so what I will do in the remaining time is to sketch a um, uh, reduction from our problem here. So the minimization of the weighted number of uh, jobs uh, uh, from some hard problem P to uh, our pro uh, to the minimization of the weighted number of tardy jobs. And uh, yeah, to do so, uh, let's start with what this hard problem P is. And this is a so-called multiple colored uh, subgraph isomorphism problem. In this problem, we have given two graphs, some large graph G and some small pattern graph H, uh, which are colored. So each vertex has a color. And for H, each vertex has even a different color. And the question is uh, whether we can map the vertices of H to, so, to, uh, so whether this graph H appears as a pattern in G. So whether we can uh, map the vertices from H to vertices of G of the same color. Uh, in such a way that, uh, well, whenever we have an edge between the two vertices in uh, H, for example, here the brown blue edge, then uh, there is also an edge between these two selected vertices. So, uh, yeah, in this example here, uh, H indeed appears as a pattern of G, as can be seen by this uh, graph uh, mapping. And, uh, yeah, and for this, uh, Problem: The multicolored subgraph be actually uh, marks showed a running time lower bound of the form uh, we needed. We need so uh, assuming the ETH, uh, there is no n to the O of k over log k time algorithm for this, where k is the total number of edges and vertices of this pattern, small pattern graph H. So. Um, what's left to do is to reduce this problem here to the minimization of tardy jobs uh, using at most, uh, well, O of k, where k is the number of edges and vertices in uh, H, many different weights. And uh, this reduction will uh, run in essentially uh, three steps. So first, uh, we will kind of number the vertices in G arbitrarily. Uh, so for, uh, actually for each color of uh, G, we number the vertices arbitrarily. And for the rest of the talk, uh, I, I mean, I will refer, for example, to this vertex by red one, and this vertex here will be blue one, and the, this vertex will be red, brown one, and those three will all be distinct vertices. Okay. Then as a first step uh, of our algorithm, we kind of want to um, select want to um, model the selection of uh, the one vertex of each color. So kind of the, the vertex to which uh, in a, if the pattern H appears in G, then uh, to which uh, vertices in G, the vertices of H are mapped to. So uh, for example, here selecting vertex brown one, blue two, and um, blue three. And then in a set, Second step, uh, why we do this step point shortly later, but uh, there we will count for each edge of H. So considering, for example, here this brown blue edge of H, uh, we will count the edges which are lexicographically larger equal than uh, the, the, the pair of selected vertices in the red, blue and red part. So um, yeah, for example, red two and blue three, uh, where lexicographically larger here means that, uh, well, either the, uh, endpoint in the red part is larger than the selected red vertex. So this would be applied for this edge here incident to the three. 
Um, or the edge is actually incident to the selected vertex, so the vertex two. And uh, in the blue part, it is incident to a vertex which is larger and bigger than the selected vertex. So the um, vertex uh, blue three in this example. And um, yes, so in this case example, we would then count these three green edges here. And in the third step, we will then count instead of the lexicographically larger equal, we count, we'll count the lexicographically smaller equal uh, edges. And the idea here is that uh, combining these steps two and three, um, the number of edges, we will actually count uh, each edge bet between here the red and the blue vertices once, because each edge is larger or equal uh, than the pair of selected vertices, except for potentially uh, the edge between the selected blue and the selected red vertex, because this edge is e both larger equal and smaller equal um, than the, um, yeah, this pair two, blue, red two, blue three. And so uh, if there is indeed uh, an edge between the two selected vertices, um, then we will actually have kind of uh, um, the number of red blue vertices plus one uh, edges which are counted, while otherwise we will only count the number of red blue vertices edges. And so in total, uh, we will definitely count each edge of the uh, graph G once. And if we count for each edge of the uh, pattern graph uh, an edge twice, uh, so if we have counted E of G plus E of H many edges, uh, then we will, this will imply that um, we this pattern graph actually appears as a subgraph of G. Um, okay, so this is the higher level idea of the reduction. And uh, so now I will continue by uh, well, sketching these steps one, two, three, uh, starting with uh, step one. Okay. So where we want to kind of um, model the selection of one vertex of each color class. Um, but actually, before I do this, um, uh, so we actually, what we are going to do is in some sense, we transform these two graphs into, uh, well, the set of jobs, which are in some sense triples of numbers. So the processing time weight and um, due date. And uh, before I describe this reduction, I will first uh, want to shortly talk about uh, how these numbers are constructed and in some sense to interpret it. Um, so, um, first, of, so here on the right, uh, I will from now on always, so I mean, I will make the, uh, describe the reduction based on our example of this pattern graph H and the large graph G here on the right. And, um, yeah, so all appearing numbers we will uh, consider with respect to some large basis n. And the advantage of this is that uh, no appear, and so we can actually treat each digit uh, um, separately. And uh, each uh, number is now uh, divided into uh, several blocks uh, consisting of several digits. So in the First, most significant, we have the vertex selection block, um, which plays well, is mostly relevant for the first step of uh, well, selecting the vertices to which we have the vertices of the pattern graph on H2. And um, then we have uh, the so called large blocks, which are uh, responsible for counting the uh, larger equal edges. And here for, we have one such block for each edge of this pattern graph uh, H down here. And uh, this edge, cons the, this block here consists of well, the last two digits kind of correspond to the end vertices in, so here in H. So the blue and brown vertex in this example and the four, four, the four digits before correspond to the four edges between blue, blue and brown vertices in G and uh, the same happens here for the red blue edge um, in where we have kind of the last two digits for the endpoints in H and uh, the four, digit, four digits before for the edges between uh, the red and blue vertices. And then the same 
thing happens in the small blocks where we now we're just now responsible for counting the smaller equal instead of the larger equal digits. And finally, we have one digit here, one last digit here, which will uh, be the um, which will do the actual counting of the edges. So this digit here kind of will increase by one for every uh, yeah larger equal edge and this doing the large blocks and with smaller equal edge for the small blocks. Uh, okay. And now also for the rest of the, the reduction, uh, I will, I mean, on the on the right hand side, I will have kind of the, the example graph uh, we, we are considering. In the bottom, uh, I will keep the, um, the uh, um, I will keep kind of uh, the, the weight and processing time of uh, the jobs we spent so far, so in, which in the beginning is just zero. And on the top right corner, I will uh, consider the number of different weights we uh, used so far, because uh, well, that's kind of the crucial property. We, we kind of need to bound the number of uh, different weights we're using. OK, so now let's start with the uh, first step of selecting vertices. And uh, so for each color, we have now two kinds of jobs. Um, for, so considering, for example, this uh, blue color here, we will have the color two jobs, blue jobs, and uh, two jobs, blue J, and not blue J. And uh, yeah, so in total, these are, each of these jobs will have a different weight. So in total, we will only spend two to the two times uh, the number of vertices in H many uh, jobs, which is smaller than 2K. And um, so the job blue J, uh, so now selecting the, the vertex uh, blue three or blue I in general, or blue three here to be a part of the, uh, yeah, so that we met, match this vertex on this here, then corresponds to three I times or three times in this example, selecting the job blue, not blue J, and then N minus I times the job not blue J. Um, and so, yeah, how does the jobs J and not blue J and not blue J look like? So um, actually the processing time and uh, weight of job blue J will be the same. And uh, they can be uh, constructed as follows. So essentially for each blue digit in the vertex selection or large blocks, so these three digits, we will have a one. And uh, for all other digits, we will have a zero. And um, for the job not blue J, this is very similar, except that we kind of pick now the replace the blue ones in the vertex and the small uh, blocks by a one, so resulting in these two jobs. And actually, these jobs have the same uh, due date, and which actually holds for all, the, all of these sellers' jobs. So also brown J and not brown J would have the same due date, uh, which is of this form. And the idea behind this due date is uh, to ensure that uh, for each color, we will need to select exactly n uh, of these jobs, j and not j, to be scheduled early. And uh, well, this is done as follows. So I mean, the, 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 this jobs we have in the steps are the only ones which with non-zero entries up front here. And because we want to maximize the weight of the early jobs, um, we also, in particular, we kind of need to maximize the, 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 the first digit of the total weight of the early jobs. And the only uh, jobs which will have a non-zero in the this first digits are the jobs brown J and not brown J. And uh, therefore, to this is maximized if we take N of these uh, jobs. But uh, yeah, which of the N jobs uh, is kind of uh, irrelevant? whether we take kind of n times j and n time, and zero times not j or five times uh, brown j and uh, five to, uh, n minus five times not brown j doesn't matter. Uh, in all cases, we get this uh, n here for the um, num weight of the early jobs and similar for the red n and blue n then digit. So uh, more concretely, if we select brown one, um, brown uh, red two and Blue three, uh, then the processing time and weight of the these early jobs is as follows. So here for the first three digits we always have n, and then uh, well the large blocks we kind of replace the 
from the red digits by this red two here, the blue digits by this blue three, and so on. And uh, yeah, in, in, some, in the similar sense, we have here then for the red digits n minus two, for the, and for the blue digits n minus three, and so on. And yeah, so we kind of encoded like with this three here that we picked the vertex blue three and also this n minus three here in case this. Okay, so this is how we encode the selection of the vertices. Uh, so uh, now we need to kind of make sure that the counting step works. So uh, we want to count the number of edges which are lexicographically larger or equal um, than uh, the pair of selected vertices. And um, yes, so um, we start uh, with the kind of the, the, then this first block here, so with the edges between the blue and uh, red vertices. And recall that we selected now this um, two red uh, two and blue three. And uh, now we will have uh, actually go through the edges one by one. So the uh, red blue edges here in the graph G one by one in an arbitrary order. And for each of these edge, we add two jobs, uh, JE and not JE. Um, so they have different weights. So the, counting the number of different ways we use, we increase here by two. Um, but um, this in, um, in this, uh, we will use this for all of the, the same weights for all of these edges, red blue edges. So uh, we will only increase by two here. And now uh, the jobs uh, are in some sense very similar. So, uh, I mean, JE -J and not JE have actually the same processing time. And they have almost the same weight, but the drop the weight of drop JE is slightly larger than the drop of um, not JE. And um, so they are actually the, the jo jobs with uh, the largest remaining weight. And actually, they will be, I mean, as that for the other edges, they will become jobs with the same weight, but they will have much higher processing times. So actually, we want to schedule as many of these. Uh, so ideally, what we would want to schedule both JE and not JE early. And if not, if this is not possible, then we want to schedule at least one of them. Early. And in fact, uh, considering the due dates, which, uh, well, I mean, this first part here is already spent during uh, the vertex selection part. And then this one here and one here will be spent for well, JE or not JE, whichever job we will decide to schedule early, uh, we cannot. This shows that we cannot show both of schedule both of them early because then we would have a two for the later of these jobs, and it wouldn't be okay. So uh, we can schedule at the most one of these jobs early, and we actually want to schedule one of them early, and because they have the same process. In time, we actually want to schedule this job. Can we schedule this job early? So, as said, this first part here of the uh, due date is um, uh, is always this is already used for vertexes from the vertex selection gadget. This one here is used for the job itself. And then to see whether this job can be scheduled early, we kind of need to compare this one three up here versus this two three down here. So uh, we can schedule uh, this job e early on, if and only if this due date here is larger equal than this spent process in terms of far. So if and only if we have that this one three here is larger equal than this two three. And uh, yeah, so if this is the case, then we schedule actually this more important job one here and now increase here by one. Uh, so actually for this example, this is not the case. So I mean, one three is smaller than two three. And so we will have to schedule JE early and uh, thereby increasing the processing time spent so far, well, here by one and the uh, way so far spent by one. And yes, so for the other two jo jobs between um, blue, uh, blue, green edges and G, we actually do the same. So considering the, the edge to poor next, um, we again have uh, two jobs using the same weights as before. The processing time is now uh, the kind of shifted uh, much larger, uh, shifting the one here, one digit to the left. 
and now uh, we're also increasing the pro due date to incorporate that this processing time is earlier and actually also that we spend this uh, the, what digit of one already here. But again, we get that one of these jobs is early, can be early if and only if two four this two four here is larger equal than this two three down here. And actually, uh, we act always can schedule uh, not JE early if we want to, because, uh, well, this NN will be always larger equal to this 2, 3. And now we can uh, yeah, schedule in this, this example JE early, and we do so, and yeah, increasing the weights and processing time here. And now we kind of have this one here for the first uh, larger equal edge we counted. Yeah, and then we continue with the next edge. So this time this is the edge two, three, which we selected. And yeah, in this case, actually the processing time on actually and this due date in uh, exactly the same on in this on this uh, two blocks so far. And then this one here will ensure that uh, the due date of this job JE will be always be larger than whatever is coming here. And yeah, so in this case, drop J can also be early. And uh, we increase the processing time here to two. And then for the next edge, this is also lexicographically larger. We again increase by one. And now uh, we actually want to do the same for the next edge, for the so the blue brown edge. So uh, again, add these two jobs, which, which are almost the same, but the more, slightly more weight drop of slightly more weight uh, being larger, uh, be having the early due date. But now we kind of have the problem considering so far that actually, like, I mean, to, we have to um, ensure kind of that now to decide whether this job JE here is early. Now these digits here, which uh, depend on the selected vertices before, are much more important than. Um, whatever happens here. And uh, we, we do not want kind of the, the, to, to decide whether the blue uh, brown edge is lexical or really larger equal, that this just cannot depend on the selected blue vertex. And therefore we kind of need to ensure that the processing time we spent on these jobs here are some digits we know before. And so we will add some filler jobs which will increase this processing time and actually also the weights here always to end. And uh, so, yeah, the filler jobs uh, look as follows. So here we have the first filler jobs for the red digit has a one here, and the second filler job for the blue digit has a one at this blue digit. And their due date is, well, just so that we can actually fill this up up to N, but not further. So after scheduling these two filler jobs, we will here increase to N and uh, on both in both the weight and the processing time. And after we have done so, then we actually kind of know when the first job of the gadget, of this gadget for the blue brown um, edges will start. And then we can actually do the same. So we can pick the start of the first edge, uh, then construct two jobs, which where the yeah, first one is slightly larger, but has an earlier due date. And then we have that the, we can, and they have the same processing time. And uh, all right, I forgot to mention that actually now the number of uh, different weights we used uh, actually increased because uh, we, uh, to four, because we used, um, yeah, these two jobs had two different, two weights we didn't use so far. And now actually for, uh, these jobs for the brown blue edges, they will also use another uh, weight than the weights before. So we again get two new weights here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so uh, they, mm -hmm. they have the same uh, weight and uh, they, they, they function the same way. And again, we kind of have that we can schedule this slightly uh, larger job, uh, more important job early, if not only if, um, this one to here is larger equal than this one to here because, uh, right, this should be ends here. So then we have that this is exactly the same as this. Okay. And so this is how we count all the lexicography. Larger blah, equal edges. 
and it remains to show how to count the lexicographically smaller edges. And this is based on the same idea. So what we've spent, the weights we spent so far are still bounded linearly in this number k, so edges of E and H. And the idea to count the lexicographically smaller edges is now exactly the same, uh, except that we now use these numbers n minus uh, two and n minus three instead of two and three. And so again, we have two uh, jobs, which with has kind of the same weight pattern and processing time pattern. So what's the same being the same for J and not JE and the weight for uh, JE being by one larger than the weight for not JE. And now looking at these blocks, when can we sketch the job JE early? Well, I mean, the due date here is identically to this processing time spent so far here. Then this one here will be spent for the due date of this job here. Uh, so, oh, sorry, this must be an n minus one here because this is from the edge one three. Uh, and then we will have that, um, yeah, this job can be, JE can be early if and only if this n minus one, n minus two, three here is larger equal than this, uh, this n minus two, n minus three here. And uh, well, this can be transformed like easy transformations, just canceling the ends. Uh, we get that this is the case if and only if this one three from this edge here is appearing here. So it's larger, uh, it's smaller equal now than the two three uh, from yeah, from the selected vertices. And then we kind of can do the same, going through all edges, adding the filler jobs at the end. And then, um, yeah, actually, we kind of the number of jobs, uh, different weights we use, we kind of get another four time, four jobs for each edge of H. Um, but uh, yeah, then, uh, yeah, we, we do so. And that actually already finished our, our construction. And after the last small blocks, so we used uh, the, only this many edges, which is smaller equal than 8K many edges. So um, we have only used few different weights. And now the weight of the early jobs is this large number here where the uh, these first digits are actually independent of uh, the selected vertices. And uh, we actually also always count every, every edge of G at least once. And then we have here this plus L where L is the number of edges between the selected vertices. And so therefore we have that this graph H appears as a pattern in G, if and only if this L here is larger equal than the number of edges of H. And uh, thereby we, uh, this then implies that assuming the ETH, uh, well, we cannot improve too much on the Known algorithm, best known, uh, and the algorithm for minimizing the weighted number of tile jobs in a single machine when there are only few different due dates. Uh, different, sorry, different, few different weights. And uh, the, the, I mentioned in the beginning that the same statement also holds for the number of different processing times. And this works by a very similar reduction, uh, essentially uh, kind of swapping the weights and processing uh, and times of each jobs and then adapting the new dates. Um, okay, so let's wrap things up. So we have seen that the known algorithms for constant number of, uh, diff, uh, of different weights or different processing times are almost optimal according to this hypothesis ETH. And uh, we also, yeah, so uh, have then have W1 hardness for the W sharp and P sharp by the same reduction. Yeah. However, uh, there's still a uh, future work to do. So first of all, I mean, this is kind of, there's still this gap of uh, logarithm of W sharp or logarithm of T sharp between this upper and lower bound. And yeah, of course it's interesting where the truth in some sense really lies. So whether we can actually, yeah, also get a lower bound of N to the middle of W sharp, for example. And uh, second, uh, I mean, we have this, uh, there are these ILP based algorithms with the running terms of the form O of W sharp plus P of W sharp times poly of N. And there it would be interesting kind of to yeah improve their running time, for example, getting rid of this tilde up here, and then this log factors. 
uh, or also get uh, non-ILP based algorithm score reports. And yeah, with this, I want to thank you for your attention. Okay, Klaus, thank you very much. And let me open the question part. Uh, so you may have a question or view or something that you want to share with us. Uh, so everybody can unmute uh, and ask the question directly. Don't hesitate and go ahead. Uh. I have the question if possible. Uh, uh, Klaus, thank you very much for your talk. And uh, as I understand, your work is primarily at first uh, of a high theoretical importance. Uh, but I want to ask about the practical side of the motivation as well. So you mentioned at the very beginning, and, uh, and it's uh, completely true, that uh, this uh, problem has a pseudo-polynomial algorithm and even some polynomial algorithms with respect to the finite number of weights or finite number of different processing times, they also exist. Uh, what is my interest uh, in is that are you aware about um, some kind of benchmarks or um, like the test data sets with some kind of tricky distributions of weight processing times and due date, uh, where it is still, um, let's say, it is still important uh, to have an efficient uh, algorithm and where just the pseudo polynomial algorithm is not enough. Uh, uh, you mean like kind of really instances where you have only few weights, but actually these weights are also very large, so that the maybe ve maybe is... very large, or there are many weights, and like it's it's very hard or sufficiently hard from the computational point of view uh, to use just the ordinary pseudo polynomial algorithm. Uh, yeah. So no, actually, I, I don't know. Actually, I think it's I uh, easy to artificially uh, produce such instances, at least. Yeah, I mean. Yes, you just sure. need a large, large processing times, but few processing times. Yeah, but uh, whether this has also some practical importance. Ah, well, you can find actually jobs that look like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could imagine that somehow, if you have kind of some some kind of, well, if kind of you first want to minimize the very important jobs, then the medium important jobs, and then the low important jobs then this might well then you might uh, this might force you to kind of use large weights in some sense mm -hmm. um but yeah i don't know i actually uh, i mean also like if you like it's for this setting exactly where you have kind of really this lexicographic preferences also reduction does not directly apply to show hardness so, uh, so yeah i don't actually uh, but yeah, this would be one setting where I could imagine that. And um, uh, yeah. I, I think Mr. Hermelin wanted uh, to also add something. Uh, could you repeat that, please, if possible? Uh, I, I, I just mentioned that uh, it's easy to artificially if you uh, produce, like for if you want for experimental uh, work, mm -hmm. just random artificial instances are easy to produce. Maybe you're uh, more natural to look for because the result also applies for a P sharp for a small number of processing times, not only small number of weights. Maybe these are more natural, you know, jobs that take a lot of, you have to construct, I don't know, airplanes, but you have only to construct five different types of airplanes, right? I don't know. I, I, I definitely, I don't know, like a real world uh, example, I do not know also. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Thank you, Nathalie, for your question. Mike? Let me ask a very general question. Uh, Klaus, uh, which other basic scaling problems, uh, NP hard scaling problems, have been shown to be W1 hard? Um, like, so. Um, so like for, with respect to these parameters we study, so the number of uh, different processing time or number of different due dates, um, I am not aware right now. This is the uh, first one, except that there is one which is more general. Basically this problem, but more with batches, uh, which we had worked on with Matthias previously. It's kind of the same problem, but you have batches and you have release times. 
as oh, well. In this, we were able to show... That's W1 hard or...? Yeah, W1 hard for P sharp, for P sharp, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. okay. But other than that, I think this is also the first one. Okay. That's kind nice. of the point of... Uh, there are, for other parameters, there are hardness results. Like if you need to select K jobs for something and uh, the parameter is K, then there are W1 hardness results for this. But that's a, like a different, uh, not the number of different numbers, so to speak. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, any other question? If not, uh, then let me mention uh, the talk which we will have in two weeks. Uh, it will be given by Seda August from Koch University in Turkey. And uh, she will speak about a math heuristics for the generalized order acceptance and scheduling problem. And I hope to share it with you. And I hope that you will be with us and that you will like uh, the seminar. And that's it. Okay. Stay tuned and uh, see you in two weeks. Bye-bye. Huh? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.